Hi everyone, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm going to be bringing to you a really unexpected recipe. I didn't plan on making it, but this is seriously the best bread that I've ever eaten and the best homemade bread that you'll probably ever eat either. It's delicious. It actually came about, um, it's the same recipe actually as my sesame bread rings, my Kuluria Thessalonikis that I just posted recently, and I'll link it in the recipe section down below. I had a batch laying around because when I shoot videos, I always make a couple different batches so we can you know not be shooting from morning till the next morning <laughs> so I had a batch in my refrigerator and it's been it was sitting there for like at least two three days and I was like I don't feel like making uh, the sesame bread rings because that felt like too much work I was exhausted what should I do I definitely didn't want to throw it out so I just rolled it into a ball I put some sesame seeds on there and I baked it and that was just the best bread that I ever had in my life It was crusty on the outside super moist on the inside. I mean, I made it so many times after that and it never went wrong. So I'm going to go over the ingredients and then we're going to get started and I'll show you just how delicious that bread is. So I have two cups of um, bread flour and two cups of all-purpose flour with a little bit of sea salt. So that's ready to go. I'm just going to put it right here into my mixer, mixing bowl, because I'm just going to use my tabletop mixer because I have one and it just makes it so much easier. It cuts the kneading time a lot so if you don't have one it's just fine you can totally do this by hand you're just gonna have to knead it longer and I've already combined some um, dry active yeast with a little bit of water and about two teaspoons of sugar in here you're supposed to just let it sit for about 10 minutes until you see this beautiful cloud puffy cloud form on top now the longer it sits, the, the bigger the cloud will become, but after about seven or eight minutes, you'll see some foam and it'll be really puffy looking, and then you'll know it's ready. If it doesn't get foamy or puffy looking, you're going to want to throw that away and get some new yeast because very rarely does yeast go bad. When, when it goes bad, you just can't use it. And if you were to use it, you would just like ruin this whole recipe because it wouldn't rise. So make sure you have um, good yeast on hand. So now everything goes in the bowl. This recipe is so easy. Can you tell how excited I am to share it? Those bread rings too, you have to make them if you haven't already done so. I have my cheat sheet here, let me move it out of the way. <laughs> and we need about a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm gonna add that in there. All I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna put my Put, I have my dough hook attachment attached. I'm going to let this knead on low speed for about seven minutes until it all comes together and it's nice and smooth, and then it's going to be ready for the next step. Okay, so the dough kneaded for seven minutes. If you're not using a standing mixer, then just knead it for about 10 to 12 minutes or until it's nice and smooth. What I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of oil in my bowl or a lot of oil, <laughs> should have been less than that. But basically what we're doing is oiling our bowl so that way the dough can rise freely. I'm just gonna coat it, warm it into a bowl, and it quickly becomes so smooth. Now, I'm just gonna cover it with my kitchen towel and set it in the warmest place in my house and it's going to take, it's going to, it's going to need to double in size. So it's going to take any time, any time between 45 minutes to about an hour, maybe more. It just depends on the temperature in your house, but you're going to want it to be doubled in size. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let's take a look at our dough and perfect. It's going to be nice and bubbly. And then we're just going to punch it down. And now at this point, you want to make sure you heat up your oven to about 500 degrees and if you have a cast iron pan and a pizza stone you're going to want to put it in there to warm up with your oven so put the cast iron pan in the lowest rack of your oven and put your pizza stone set in the middle rack and let that warm up so it gets really nice and hot that's going to create a beautiful crust on the bread and I'll show you what I mean later so you want the oven to get really nice and hot. This is gonna, we're going to form this into just a ball and it's going to rise again until it's really beautiful and about almost double in, in size. And in the same time that this happens, the oven will be ready for it to bake. So you want that to be done. 
just like that. I'm going to cover it again. I formed it into just a, a, bowl, a ball. You could also do it in a long, um, almost like an Italian bread style loaf, whatever shape you like. That's fine. Set it aside. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. So once it's nice and risen, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be beautiful and smooth and puffy. What we're going to do at this point is we are going to just brush it with water. And this cup of water and ice right here is going to go into our cast iron pan. Once this goes in, it's going to create a steam, which is going to create a beautiful crust on top. And then we're just going to uh, slice in a nice, just a nice pattern. Just a few slices. It just looks really pretty and it also helps it rise. And then if you want to, if you like sesame seeds, just sprinkle just a few sesame seeds on top. And then in the oven it goes. It's going to bake at 500 degrees. I'm going to put it in the oven and then as soon as I put it in, I'm going to pull out the bottom rack and pour this ice water into the cast iron pan. Push it back in, close the oven, and then I'm going to reduce the temperature to 450 degrees, which at that point the oven will have opened and the temperature will have dropped anyway, but I'm going to want it to maintain 450 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm going to leave it at that temperature and then allow it to cook for 30 minutes. At 30 minutes, it'll be ready. We're just going to take it out of the, out of the oven and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. And this is what it looks like once the bread comes out of the oven. Another really nice tip, you can take it out uh, after 30 minutes, take it off of the pan, and then put it directly onto the pizza stone for between three to five minutes. It'll get more crispy on the bottom and it'll just be excellent. But it's cooled down a bit and you're gonna wanna let it cool for about 30 minutes until, so that way all of the steam kind of like spreads through the bread and makes it really nice and moist inside. But let's cut into it and I want you to listen to how crispy and crunchy it's gonna sound. First of all, just take a look at how beautiful this is. Does that not look like it came out of one of the best bakeries in your neighborhood? Listen to this a second. You hear that crisp? Now look at the inside, how moist it is. Let's cut another slice. Look at that. This recipe right here knocks all other bread recipes way out of the ballpark. Oh my God, it's so good. I made this dough a few days ago and I let it sit in my refrigerator about two days. And what that does is it creates many more air bubbles in the bread and gives it a little bit of like a sourdough flavor. So you can do that. This is so good. All I need is to run and get myself some olive oil, balsamic vinegar and just dip it and enjoy this. The recipe, as always, will be in the description box down below. Check it out. It's on the website, www.dimitrasdishes.com. All the exact measurements, this recipe, and many more. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of these delicious recipes. Let me know what you want to learn how to make next, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.